Hello and uh, welcome to the newest episode of El Dino, only on RiotRadio.ca and all of our other affiliations. Uh, also YouTube, now that's our new thing. Now, my name is Eldon Atkin. If you haven't seen the show before, I talk all about dinosaurs. I've done the show quite a few times and this time and the last three episodes, or I guess actually two episodes, we've been talking about Canadian dinosaurs. So to preface the story, I looked up Canadian dinosaurs and the... Canadia, or I guess Britannica Canadia, or Canadian, what do you want to call it, gave me 37 dinosaurs. So I took those all, and I've been covering them for the last two weeks. Uh, this is now the third week of it. So we're into the Bs, we've cleared all the As, and now we're talking Bs and some Cs. Now, all these dinosaurs have been found in Canada. The other ones have been found outside of Canada as well, so they're not strictly just Canadian. Um, also, I, any of the pictures I use, anything like that, it's taken from um, all kinds of all over the uh, all over the uh, the internet. I credit them all, so you can check them out afterwards. Um, but with that being said, we're gonna hop into it. So we got into we cleared all the A's, and now we're into B's. And B is an interesting one. Um, it is called Brachylophosaurus. Its name is short form for sh uh, short crested lizard. So I took some I took some pretty interesting takes on this thing. Um, to start us off, it was first found in 1936 near Steveville, uh, but it wasn't actually named until 1953 by Charles M. Sternberg. It was then found like a quote unquote secondary species in uh, what was that 19 uh, I can't read it 88 uh, by Jack Horner, uh, but it's now thought that this actually fits under the same species name but of a different, um, or same family, I guess, just different name. So that one was called B. canadiensis, meaning found in Canada. But the funny thing is, uh, B. canadiensis, most of, if not all of the uh, fossils that have been found of B. canadiensis uh, are found in the States. So you can tell me why it's called B. canadiensis. I don't really know. It lived during the Campion, of the create of the Cretaceous period, so around 89 to 88 million years ago. Almost all, actually, I think every dinosaur today actually lived in the Campion, which is pretty cool. That's kind of like the end of where the dinosaurs were doing their thing. 66 million, 65 million years ago was the end date, so we had a good couple million or 20 million years to go. It was found in Alberta in the Old Man Formation. It was also found in Montana in the Judith River Formation. Um, the Judith River Formation one is B. canadiensis, while this one is uh, the not canadiensis for some reason. Its family, Hadrosauridae, uh, includes myosaurs, which myosaurs, I'm fairly certain, were one of the first dinosaurs discovered um, on a clutch of eggs. Uh, they're good moms, we think. Um, Parasaurolophus and Edmontosaurus. Edmontosaurus we will talk about in the future. Um, Edmonton lizard, which is kind of cool. Uh, Brachylophosaurus was about 9 meters long and could have been over 3 meters tall. So I have a picture up uh, taken from um, Prehistoric Wildlife. Kind of shows how big it would have been compared to us. Um, most hadrosaurs of this size were quite large. Hadrosaurs kind of were the bigger uh, dominant species. Think iguanodons, think um, Parasaurolophus. Again, you've seen Jurassic Park, I hope, so you know what Parasaurolophus looks like. The crested head that kind of trumpets. Um, now, it's credited with being one of the best preserved hadrosaurs ever. So, they found um, multiple, there's been so many, f like, found um, Brachylophosauruses. Uh, the four main ones that are credited are uh, Elvis, Leonardo, Roberta, and Peanut. Now, of these four, we're talking almost pristine skeletons. Uh, some of them have mummified, so they have, like, their skin still intact. Really kind of crazy when you think about dinosaurs, it's hard to kind of, it's mostly guesswork, right? When you can't see all the bones, but when you have all the bones laid out in front of you, you can kind of guess or at least assume what it looked like. We should have a picture also of paleo art um, that kind of just shows 
a better pick of Brachylophosaurus. Again, very interesting. I like hadrosaurs. They're a cool family group. Uh, my favorite is Lambiosaur. Now, the last thing I will say is that Leonardo is one of the most famous as it is, uh, like, it's mummified, <laughs> which doesn't happen often. So, it is 90% complete. When you are building dinosaurs from scratch, it's tough. But when you have 90% of the dinosaur complete with skin samples, it is insane. So it makes us really kind of, we can, we can know a lot about what this dinosaur would have done, how it would have acted by what it actually looked like. So that's not a ton of information about Brachylophosaurus, unfortunately. Most of it was kind of the same old, same old. Moving on to something else, we have two um, Ceratopsians to finish us off. Kind of like last week where we had two Ceratopsians. There's a lot of Ceratopsians found, which are Triceratopsis family. Um, so we have Centrosaurus, its name meaning pointed lizard. It lived between 76.5 to 75.3 million years ago in the Campion of the Cretaceous period. It lived uh, in what is now southern Saskatchewan and southern Alberta. So we haven't had any dinosaurs from Saskatchewan just yet. Now we do. Kind of cool. Not just Alberta. So it was first discovered in 1901 by Lawrence Lamb. So Lamb found uh, partial frills or par a partial frill in the Red Deer River. Uh, the Red Deer River is kind of where it's thought that Dinosaur National Park is now or Dinosaur Provincial Park is now where that was found. Uh, he didn't name it until the following year in 1902, um, giving it the name Monoclonius Dawsonae, uh, but they renamed it to um, Centrosaurus Apparatus in 1904. So, better name, I like Centrosaurus Apparatus better. Um, it is probably the earliest uh, Ceratopsian discovered in Canada, and it is the first Centrosaur ever found in Canada, which is really cool. Um, there are some supposed fossils found in Montana, but it's not entirely conclusive. Um, the family, or Centrosaurus, is quite large, um, so it can be kind of tough to kind of piece them all together, unfortunately. So Centrosaurs are known for being a medium-sized Ceratopsian, Ceratopsian meaning in the family of Triceratops, um, but they're much smaller than its cousin, the Triceratops. So it's thought that it would have been about 5.5 meters, so that's 16 to 18 feet long. Uh, we should have pictured that as well. Not a small dinosaur by any means, but also not humongous. Now, it probably weighed up to 1.4 tons or 2.2 to 2.8 in short tons. I think short tons is what the Americans use. Um, I'm not entirely sure, unfortunately. Comparatively, though, Triceratops weighed upwards of uh, 10 tons and could have been 8 meters long, so... Um, just a just a bit bigger, you know, just a, just a slight slight size increase. Now, centrosaurines had, or all, or at least should be known for their large nasal horns. So, uh, my favorite my favorite uh, ceratopsian is Teracosaurus. It has like this crazy long horn, kind of like what oryxes have today, with like their really long horns at the back of their head. Um, so, most of centrosaurs are known for having that kind of long nasal horn. Uh, Sargosaurus, as I said, and it might have had brow ridges or brow horns and openings in their frills. So there should be a picture as well of um, just centrosaurs kind of showing off their frills. Some of them have them pictured having the kind of the curving down horns and then like also like the bone protrusions along the side of the, uh, the frill. We're not entirely sure, but it's a good guess. Now, the Centrosaurinae group is based off of the base name, Centrosaur. So Centrosaurus is kind of like the, the progenitor. It's the number one. Um, some others in this group are Staracosaurus, as I said, uh, Diabloceratops, and Pachyrhinosaurus. Pachyrhinosaurus, we will talk about. It's in the peas, so we have quite a way to go, unfortunately. Um, this is taken ex ex like almost verbatim from prehistoric wildlife, <laughs> and they say there are so many individuals known from fossils, it is impossible to know how many fossils there are for Centrosaurus, which is, as a paleontologist, when, not me, myself, I'm not a paleontologist, but speaking from their point of view for this time, that's wild. Like, you want all that bones. You want to be able to look at this and say, hey, here's a slew of fossils. We can kind of compare and understand what we're working with here. Now, because of this, though, the abundance of fossils and how they've been found suggests that Centrosaurus was probably a herd dinosaur, meaning it's huge herds. Some people think it could have been 10s to, you know, 20s to 30s. 
Some people, it could, I think it could have been hundreds. So they could have been very large herds. Um, there's a Walking with Dinosaurs documentary that stars Pachyrhinosaurus. It takes place in like northern Canada. And picture that herd size, a big herd. Centrosaurus was probably like that. Now with that though, it was also the most common of the Ceratopsians to be found for its time period. So it kind of makes sense that yes, there's tons of fossils. There's also tons of um, like all over the place. So it probably was pretty prolific. Uh, the theory suggests that it was a herd dinosaur, which I said, um, massive, fossil, massive fossil beds. But uh, with this also, it could have been a watering holes. If you know, when you're, when you're a large herbivore that needs to drink lots, you need lots of water. So it could have been watering holes that dried up during droughts and they all came back there and kind of, you know, starved to death. Um, it could have been traumatic natural disasters like earthquakes or rivers overflowing uh, or volcanoes erupting, just killing them all at once, which is kind of sucks to be a dinosaur for that. But hey, at least we get to preserve it all. In some of these bone beds as well, Styracosaurus was kind of found in and around the bones as well which kind of makes the theory that Styracosaurus probably moved in and started taking over some territory. Styracosaurus would have been a little bit bigger, could have outcompeted um, Centrosaurus, probably better than, it, than Centrosaurus could have taken care of it. Um, so it makes sense. And in the funny little twist, there was a huge controversy. So Kentrosaurus, which is a uh, stegosaurid known for its... Um, spiky shoulders and like covered in thorns, basically like a porcupine in dinosaur form. It's spelt um, the same way Centrosaurus is, but with a K instead of a C. So there's a whole thing where people are like, they're gonna get confused, you can't do this. But Kentrosaurus is spoken with a hard K, while Centrosaurus is pronounced S, like C. So it's so it it was a funny thing in paleontology, in the paleontology world where they like, you get all up in arms because, hey, how could you name your dinosaur after my dinosaur? It's too similar. But then it's like, you know, you like pronouncing a G like a J. It's, it's not the same. So that is Centrosaurus, kind of the progenitor of the Centrosaurian line. And our last one is, again, as I said, another Ceratopsian. And this one is probably one of my favorites. Um, it is Chasmosaurus, its name meaning cleft lizard. So it was discovered in 1898 by Lawrence M. Lamb. Uh, he found it as part of uh, a neck frill, no, excuse me, neck frill in 1913. Um, Charles Sternberg and his son found more of them. And finally, it was properly named in 1914. So kind of read that back to you. They found it in 1898. Bench of frill, couldn't really decide. 1913 rolls around. Charles Sternberg and his son find a bunch of Chasmosaurus skulls in the middle of Dinosaur Park uh, in Alberta. The skulls were deemed to be a new genus, and then they were named in 1914 by the same Lawrence Lamb. So Lawrence Lamb, Canadian paleontologist, names a lot. At least I hope he's Canadian. Uh, I didn't look that up yet. <laughs> so it lived 76 to 74 million years ago, and it also lived in, you guessed it, the Campion period of the Cretaceous. Um, it could have gotten up to 5 meters in length, which is 14.1 uh, to 15.7 feet, um, and it could have weighed up to... Uh, 2,500 kilos, which is about 2.2 tons. So not a, not a small dinosaur by any means. Um, to put it kind of per like comparison to you, Chasmosaurus, picture a modern day white rhino, about the same size. We should have a picture also showing Chasmosaurus compared to a human. Not a giant dinosaur by any means, but I think it's cool to think of Chasmosaurus being compared to a white rhino, where you can kind of see, and that makes sense. Uh, for other comparisons, Triceratops has been compared to a African forest elephant, so kind of the largest of the elephants. Picture it like that kind of thing. Now, with that being said, um, you may have seen uh, Chasmosaurs before because of their crazy frills. So Chasmosaurs are known for their massive frills. We should have a picture of a skeleton of a Chasmosaur with this gigantic frill on the back of its head. So the frill was huge and had two major divots, or um, they're called uh, fenestrea. Um, which would have been kind of covered in a layer of skin. Um, and there are some ideas what this did. We're not entirely sure as well because it's it's hard to compare to, but a couple options or a couple theories are that these big hollow spots in the frill would have been covered in layers of skin and would have had tons of blood vessels coming through them. So when you're a large dinosaur, if you're cold-blooded or even warm-blooded or you need to kind of need the sun to help warm you up, you could absorb that sunlight in your frill and that heat would heat up the blood and be able to put it, like push it through your body easier. That's one idea. 
another idea for the huge frill was the fact that it probably wasn't used for intimidation because this giant like shield wall on your head would be pretty intimidating to me. The only thing with that though is since it had these big hollow spots in its frill, it wouldn't have been good for defense. So it's kind of like a picture like a moth or a butterfly that used their wings very um like very coolly look like eyes or look like other things to kind of scare off predators. This may have been an option, but at the time, like how butterfly wings were so fragile, this would not have been able to put up much of a fight. Um, with that though too, like there's a theory that Stegosaurus could have kind of flared its frills and its, or its, um, its plates on its back to make different colors. This may have been a thing too, kind of like, um, the uh, the aliens in the Avatar, where, like the weird looking rhino things, where they put their frill up and they can like change a color. It could have been an idea, but we're not entirely sure. So, like the previous dinosaur, Chasmosaur has been found in groups um, of quite a few, sometimes tens to hundreds, making it again thought that it was a herd dinosaur. Some of these bone beds were found to have um, tens or even hundreds of them, which lead to a couple things. So it could have been, again, a traumatic event. Uh, there's been two theories that the one event where they found a bunch of chasmosaurs, it was probably from a volcanic eruption. And the other event was probably a river being overflowed and chasmosaurs trying to swim across and ultimately drowning. Because when you're a very heavy dinosaur, it's tough to swim across a river. You don't know rhinos swim across rivers, so it's kind of difficult. Um, chasmosaurs also, like its previous predecessor, the Centrosaurus, is the base name for its species, or I guess its genus is the proper term. So Chasmosaurin A is named after the Chasmosaur. Uh, these members are known for their large frills and short horns. Uh, some others are Pentaceratops and Anchiceratops. So we talked about Anchiceratops last week. So if you didn't watch last week's episode, go back and watch it because it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, but with that, that's really all I have to say about these dinosaurs. So we have a bunch of Ceratopsians today. Next week shouldn't be nearly as many Ceratopsians. I hope we get to more predators. Um, I am kind of just following the order alphabetically. So we'll see what happens. But uh, thank you for staying with me today. I hope you really enjoyed the episode. My name is Eldon Atkin. Um, thanks to everybody who helps make the show. Dan and Justin, I really appreciate you guys. Um, with that being said, though, you've been watching Eldino only on rightradio.ca and all other, other affiliations like YouTube. <laughs> and with that, I will catch you next time. Uh, have a good one.